these scientists are coming back to one villain, CO2. And, and you don't get that, that impression from the film. Now, I could make a movie about how HIV has got nothing to do with AIDS. It's easy. And that's the sort of thing he does, which is, I think, why it's indeed such a flawed film. But Robin Williams, I mean, there are an interesting cast of characters in the film, some of them scientists, some of them commentators. Some of them, however, and we picked out some with, with let's say, dodgier reputations, but uh, some of them are legitimate scientists, and there's no question about it, and Lindzen... And, uh, and others, and John Christie, they are real scientists. I mean, how do they come out and say these kind of things so emphatically? Well, I've interviewed many of them. I have interviewed Richard Linson, and it was a very interesting exercise. He smoked three cigarettes during the uh, 20 minute. Uh, it's one section I think you talked to Martin Durkin about, Richard Linson, who uh, represented the Academy, set, warning George Bush about the concern. And you don't get that part of what Richard Linson actually did say. Uh, people like Singer I've interviewed again, and he's a serial complainer about all sorts of environmental things. But in any field, you will get the people saying contrary things. I mentioned AIDS. There are some really top scientists who deny HIV. It's not hard to okay. find them. All right, let me move on. Michael Duffy, uh, you believe uh, the effects of climate change have been exaggerated, but as a journalist, looking at the flaws in Durkin's film, looking at the mistakes he made... How would we be judged as journalists if we produced a film with so many obvious mistakes at the beginning? Tony, I've got to congratulate you on that interview. I think it was a very tough interview and it's given me some things to go away and think about. So I ask you, why didn't you uh, give the same degree of rigour when you interviewed Sir Nicholas Stern three months ago? He's written a report, very controversial, criticised by economists and scientists around the world. Why is it that only one side of this argument gets that level of scrutiny? Well, we're not. Um, you, can, uh, you can throw questions back at me if you like. I'm not, unfortunately, in a position to answer them all tonight. But I want to ask you the question that I asked you again. Are you satisfied or not satisfied with the documentary that you've just seen based on the flaws demonstrated in his method, in his graphic presentation and in other areas? I think it's imperfect, but I also think a lot of the stuff coming from the other side is imperfect, but we rarely see its imperfections revealed with the uh, forensic talent that you've just demonstrated here. So I think there is, there is a bias in the media's enthusiasm for, for putting certain different parts of this under the microscope. Are you saying we shouldn't have put him under the microscope? Is I'm saying actually? we should, and I'm saying the others, the Al Gores, the others should go under the microscope too on ABC television. Well, we'll get Al Gore on the program one day. We'll see what happens. And Professor, you could ask Sir Nicholas Stern back too. Professor, ask him uh, a tough question. Professor David Carolla, you're a lead author of the IPCC's... Uh, latest assessment reports on global warming. Now, as far as Martin Durkin is concerned, uh, you're involved in a, in a massive conspiracy, in fact, a money-making conspiracy, because apparently it's all about getting money in order to do your business. I mean, how do you respond, first of all, to the idea that you are engaged in a swindle here? Um, I'm not engaged in a swindle. Martin Durkin is engaged in a swindle. Um, but, yes, I do get paid to undertake climate change research and I am trained to be scientifically sceptical. And I started off in climate change research more than 25 years ago trying to disprove that global warming was caused by increases in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And the more and more I looked and the more evidence I found, it was clear that the major cause of increases in temperature around the globe over the last 50 years has been the increases in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And it is definitely not changes in solar irradiance, changes in the sun. All right, you were... Uh... You were a sceptic, I think, is what I still saying. am. You still are? I'm, scientists are trained to be sceptical. Well, they which, have to which, be. which parts of the global warming theory are you sceptical of at the moment? I'm sceptical about, I should say. I'm sceptical about solar forcing. I'm sceptical about all of science because I'm trained to question everything and question decisions made by other scientists. But the work that I have done and the work of many other scientists in the IPCC and in many other studies for the US government, for the British government, for the German government, all come to the same conclusion. That most of the warming over the last 50 years is due to the increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. 